Rolling totals or moving averages as you may call them are a common calculation in Excel. They are one of those calculations which are difficult to perform using dynamic arrays. And we often think, well, how did we do that last time? And every time we are reinventing the wheel. Well, it's time to make that a thing of the past because in this video, we're going to create our own reusable function for rolling aggregations. So we never have to think about that again. And we're going to make it flexible enough to work vertically or horizontally and it will also work with different calculations. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here are the values that we will be using for our example. Let's start by building up the function on the face of the worksheet. In cell C7, I'll type equals let open in bracket. There are two inputs required for this calculation. So let's create those first. Array is the range of cells that we want to calculate over and that's the range C3 to Q3. Then we want the period length. This is the length of the window that we want to aggregate over, and that is in cell C5. Now, to make this work with vertical or horizontal arrays, we're going to force the numbers into a single column. We'll then perform the calculations, and then if necessary, we can return it back to a row. So I will create a new variable called array to col. And for this, we're going to use the toCol function on the array variable. A running total is a calculation based on position. For example, if our period length is three, for the fifth value, we want to sum the value along with the preceding two values. Therefore, we want positions three, four, and five. So we need to create a list of numbers which represent the position of each value. To create the list of numbers, I will create a variable called period index, and that will be based on the sequence function. The sequence we want will count from one to the number of rows in the array to col variable. Because we have 15 values, this will create a list of numbers from one to 15. We now have all the values we need to start building up our calculation. So let's create a variable called calc. Our calculation is based on position. Therefore, we need one calculation for each position. To achieve that, we can use the map function. The first argument of map is the values that we want to calculate over. In our scenario, we want to calculate for each position in our period index. Since we want a separate calculation for each position, we need to use the lambda function. Within that, we need to create a name to represent each value within the period index. And we're going to call that V. So V stands for each value. Now there is one issue with rolling totals and that is that there will be a period of time where the period length hasn't yet been reached. For our example, the period length is three. So for the first position, there's only one value. And for the second position, there are only two values. So therefore we need to deal with this issue. We are going to say if, opening bracket, V, which is the period index, is less than the period length, then return an empty text string. So that means for our first value and our second value, it won't perform the calculation. It will return an empty text string. But if V is not less than the period length, then we can perform the calculation. In this example, we want to perform a sum calculation and we want to sum the values in specific rows. Therefore, we're going to use the choose rows function and we want to choose the rows from the array to col variable. Then we need to calculate the values that represent the position numbers. For this, we will use the sequence function again. For the rows argument, we want a list of numbers which has the same number of items as our period length. Then for the columns argument, we just want a single column. The start position will be equal to the position of the period index. So that is V. And then for the step, we want to move by minus one for each number. Therefore, for the fifth position, this will calculate a sequence of three, four, and five. We use choose rows to return the values from those positions, and then we use sum to aggregate those values. So that's how the calculation works. We can now close all those brackets. 
Finally, if you remember at the start, we forced our array to be a single column. So if the initial array is actually a row, we need to force our result back into a row. Let's create a variable called result. Then we can say that if, open bracket, the columns of our original array, if that is greater than one, that means that our results are in a row. So we are going to use the two row function on the result of our calc variable. Now, if the columns of the array are not greater than one, that means our initial array was already a column. Therefore, we can simply return our calc variable. Then, as the last argument of let, we want to return that result. When that calculates, boom, look at that, we've got a rolling total. If we look at position five, it is equal to the numbers in positions three, four, and five. And all the other calculations follow that same pattern. If we change the period length to six, the first result now includes the values from positions one, two, six. Okay, I admit that is a lot to remember. So let's turn this into a reusable function. Then we will have a create once and use many scenario. And we will never need to remember this calculation ever again. If you would like to be able to create these types of formulas yourself from scratch without having to constantly search YouTube in the hope that somebody else has solved your exact problem, then check out our training program over at excelofthegrid.com. It contains everything you need to truly master Excel. To make this reusable, let's edit the formula. At the start, I will add lambda. And then the parameters that we want to pass into our function are the array, the period length, and let's also add the function. Then we can remove the array and period length from our let function. And let's change the sum to be whatever function we pass across in our lambda. Then we just need to add a closing bracket at the end. Now let's select all the code by pressing Control A and then Control C to copy. Next, I will go to the formulas ribbon and click define name. The name that we're going to create is called rolling underscore total. The scope will be the workbook. We'll leave the comment field blank. Then when we come to the refers to box, we can press control V to paste the code and then click OK. And that has created our custom function. In cell C9, I'll type equals roll. We can see rolling total in the IntelliSense. That's the function we just created. So I will select that. For the array, we want cells C3 to Q3. For the period length, we want cell C5. And for the function, let's use sum. Now when we calculate, we get the rolling total calculation. If we change the period length back to three, everything updates. If we want a moving average, we can replace sum with average, and there we go. We now have a moving average calculation. Everything is now working as we expect. So let's see how we can easily reuse this function in another workbook. And also let's test it out to see if it can handle a vertical array. I will copy the cell that contains our rolling total function. Then I will come across to another workbook and paste that formula. And that's it. That's all it takes to move that to a new workbook. Now let's edit this formula. For the array, let's select B7 to B21. And for the period length, let's select the value in B4. For this example, let's suggest we are happy with average, so we don't need to make any changes to that. And when that calculates, boom, look at that. That was easy. We now have a reusable function that we can easily use in any workbook. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then do it now and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. And then once you've done that, here's another video that I think you'll really enjoy. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.